So the advances for AI and health, I think you, before we answer that question, it's about determining what do we mean by AI and healthcare. And obviously it's a very broad spectrum of products and uh, devices that one might say. So we published a report uh, middle of last year called um, Accelerating AI in Health and Care. It's on our Academic Health and Science Network site, so the AHSN site. And in it, we've showcased some really good examples of where we've seen good, safe, ethical developments of AI. And we've broadly categorised those into sort of four different areas where you could be unlocking potential for data and analytics, where you could do condition recognition, where you could be helping um, clinicians in diagnostics, and then obviously the, the stuff that we don't always think about, but operational efficiency. Um, and within those there are obviously some really good case examples um, and without going through each and every one I'd encourage the viewers to go and have a look at the report where we've showcased some really great examples. So when we published the report, within it, we went out and we interviewed quite a few companies and we interviewed quite a few developers and academics and um, government officials and those people who were regulating. And they said that there was, it's a bit of a, I'm not going to say difficult landscape, but there are some grey areas in this space. So what we did on the back of that report was we published something called a code of conduct for data-driven technologies, where we've highlighted 10 principles that outline what are some of the challenges that people don't always think about in this space? And the key ones that came out when we published it and we went out for consultation was the understanding of data. So not just about where you access the data, but the standards around data, privacy. Uh, we have something in, in Europe called the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation, interpretation of that when it comes to health and care. And then the really tricky one was around the algorithm or the actual data science around some of these technologies. And we decided to explore that a little bit more in saying, well, how do you account for some of these technologies? And how do you explain what they're doing? So we've got a few pieces of work to try and explore those in what we are calling bite-sized chunks without trying to solve the whole problem, but hone down on one or two specific areas. So we've done it from a multifactorial perspective. Um, if you break it down into three things, so people like to know what the rules and the regulations and how you play in this space. So we've tried to create a, a sort of a high level expressions of interest framework with a code of conduct. We're working very closely with um, our grand challenges team. So we have some grand challenges looking at AI across multiple industries. So it's not just health, um, for example, energy as well or aging. And to say, well, what are the rules in this game that you're also looking at from a developer's perspective and a regulator's perspective? Um, and also to say, how do we work collaboratively in an international space? So, for example, we've got this WHO AI for Health working group, we're collaborating with you, but also there's some other groups out there, for example, the IGHI, which we're also trying to work with to say, where are the reporting standards in here? Um, so we're doing that from one aspect. And then the other two is how do we bring along our workforce in this space and how do we bring along our citizens in this space? Um, so again, we work very closely with what we call Health Education England, H-E-E, -E, and we've commissioned a report um, to look at the impacts on the workforce. How should we train differently? What are the different skills we should be asking our clinicians and our workforce to adopt? And hopefully that report will be coming out in February called the Topol Report. And then the third thing is we're working very closely with some of our uh, think tanks and national bodies to say how do we bring patients along in this space to understand what does it mean to share your data, what are secondary uses of data, and what does data for research and the implications of these algorithms and this different terminology mean so that actually we can engage with them effectively but also bring them along with us in the policy making areas. <laughs> 